Lean Six Sigma has many tools and this is a favorite used by black belts. In this example, I use the House of Quality to show how to design and offload an emergency department in a hospital. Input information from customers, designers or engineers, and competition and output the effort needed to design a solution. I start by framing the challenge. Have you ever walked into your local hospital emergency room and found it full of people wheezing and coughing? This is a real example. Hospital business case. We address a hospital emergency department. The challenge is that 72% of the patients in your emergency department do not have emergencies, but use the emergency department as an after hours doctor's office. It is very inefficient to run that 72% of patients through your very expensive emergency department. The current emergency department is up to their elbows in helping patients that don't have time to innovate a solution. This means that an emergency department has decreased operational efficiency and is at risk of being overtaxed if there is a large emergency situation or if a large volume of non-emergency patients, such as in an epidemic, show up. Lean Business believes that the hospital emergency department should use a Lean Six Sigma process called the House of Quality to design a second, more efficient ED. Lean Six Sigma's House of Quality combines inputs from 1. Customers, 2. Engineering and innovators, and 3. The competition. By utilizing these three entities to design a second emergency department, you can design the second ED to offload and separate the 72%. The House of Quality takes risk out of project focus and points designers to the most optimal focus areas, leading to an efficient, patient-pleasing second emergency department. I will go through the steps quickly and then later in more detail. First, the inputs include the customer, competition, and engineering solutions. The next step is to score relative importance between the customer needs and the engineering solutions. Next, some engineering solutions will contribute to or take from other engineering solutions and this is determined next. Finally, the key conclusions come out of this exercise that help focus project direction. Let's take a look at this in more detail. I went through the six steps in the previous slide. This is just a graphical look at the process that I will follow for the rest of the presentation. Let's start with customer requirements. Customers and innovators supply this input. Let's take a look at a real case if you're designing a second emergency department to offload the 72% of patients that don't have emergencies. These customer desires, such as being fast or available over 24 hours, is a list that you need to come up with. This list is a prototype for a second additional emergency department. The column of numbers to the right is an arbitrary weighting of perceived value. The next step adds in competition. This competition step rates your capabilities for delivering the customer needs versus your competition's capabilities. This can give you a valuable information that will lead to a competitive advantage. In this case, there are no comparisons since the capability does not currently exist in the US. The next step is inputting the engineering ideas that are used to satisfy the customer needs. This is an example list of the engineering ideas that can be used to address the customer needs for the secondary emergency department. Examples include decreasing costs while increasing velocity, comfortable chairs, and preferably staff with physician assistants. Now that the inputs have been documented, we will apply weighting of the correlation between customer need and engineering design. These relationship values are arbitrary and debatable, but very valuable in this process. These correlation values, along with the ratings of the customer needs, lead to key conclusions. A couple of examples are between the customer need of fast with the engineering effort of removing waste, decreasing cost, and increasing speed. A less strong relationship would be between low cost and the integration of the hospital patient system. We build this matrix by going through it column by column. Next, we will overview the positive and negative correlations between the different engineering thrusts. Step 5 correlates positive and negative relationships between the different product or process characteristics. Let's continue to take a look at this emergency department example. These correlations tend to help promote different engineering ideas and also highlight standalone ideas. The first column, remove waste, decrease cost, increase speed, correlates strongly with preferably staff with physician assistants. Both of these engineering solutions work together to decrease cost. 
An example of two engineering ideas that conflict with each other are having a special room for contagious patients and right-sizing the office space. This effort can put these two ideas down a notch in value since they trade against the value of the other. The last step is to determine the conclusions. After performing this whole effort, the conclusions just fall out. Let's take a look at them for a secondary emergency department. These conclusions are based on your determination of relative values for the customer needs, along with the strength of correlation between the engineering efforts and the customer needs. Let's compare the percent importance. The first column jumps out at you at 19%. That is using what Lean Six Sigma refers to as a value stream, which increases value stream velocity, decreases cost, and increases quality. This effort stands out as number one. Number two at 13% are the following three efforts. One, design with flow. Two, have medical records handy, and three, integrate with hospital patient system. Note that seven engineering efforts came in at 3% or less. This effort is not the end all, but gives you an analytical way of determining where to focus your engineering effort. There are some significant benefits that fall out from using this process. You are positioned well against your competition. All stakeholders sign off. The design is fast and based on analytics, and the solution comes from the big picture. If you spent any time in your local hospital's emergency room, you'll know that it fills up with individuals carrying contagious diseases that are not emergencies. What is the reason you should send these people through the same process you do for people with a broken bone or a heart attack? A secondary note is that if you remove 72% of the patients that are not emergencies from the emergency room, won't you free up about 72% of that ER space? If so, might that be the site for your secondary emergency department? This is a tried and true methodology which leads to a strong design direction. Lastly, the design will even be stronger due to the consensus of a team effort. As a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt, it is my job to bring in black belts, green belts, and when appropriate, industrial engineers to bring efficiencies into organizations. This is just one of the many tools available in Lean Six Sigma that can come into play during an engagement. Good luck as you move into the future.